Hey guys, Andre here from High Performance Academy again. Welcome along to another one of our weekly webinars. Now today we're going to be discussing the different types of dyno out there on the market and there's actually quite a surprising range, all of them with their own idiosyncrasies, their own advantages, disadvantages and the areas that they are best for use. So we're going to talk all about that a little bit later once we actually get started on the webinar. Before that though, just a few more updates on what's been going on here over the last week. And as you'll know if you've been following us, we've had some uh, pretty spectacular problems with our 1UZFE race engine from our Toyota GT86. Uh, there's a bunch of information that I talked about last week in our pre-show about what we're planning with that engine. So I'm not going to go too much more into that, but what I did want to mention here is uh, one of the upgrades that we are looking at is to do with the dry sump system. And if we jump across to my laptop screen for a moment here, uh, this is just a quick dirty shot that I took out in the workshop before we started this webinar and I just really wanted to show you uh, the si system we've got on at the moment so what you can see here this is obviously from the underside of the engine and it's a pretty basic setup here with the Toyota 1UZFE uh, they come in a range of different sump locations this is what's referred to as a front sump so uh, the engine the front of the engine is actually up this way uh, so the part that you can't really see too well this cast alloy part this is sort of the upper section of the sump which bolts to the underside of the engine block and uh, just uh Looking its head out there, we can see a nice little hole there just showing some of the carnage, some more of the carnage that we uh, have been dealing with. So this is, as I say, pretty basic. All that we've got here, uh, the the fabricator that built this car originally basically made up this aluminium uh, laser cut plate that we've got here and then it's just got this lower section uh, which just acts as basically a bit of a sump for the oil to drain into. And then we've got a dash 10, I think it is, AN fitting on both sides of that. So the pump that we can't actually see in this photo, I don't have a, an easy shot of that unfortunately, is a three stage uh, dry sump pump. So this means that it's got two scavenge stages. The scavenge stages are what pull the oil and blow by gases etc out of the crankcase and the sump returning them to the reservoir that's mounted in the back of the car. And then the third stage is the pressure stage. This is used to draw the oil forward from that reservoir, pump it through the oil filter and then into the engine. Now there's nothing specifically wrong with this, it was a quick and easy way to get a dry sump system onto the engine and uh, let's be honest it has worked, our oil pressure problems really haven't been something we have been battling with but there are some advantages in going a little bit further with the design of the dry sump system. So what we wanted to do is get a little bit more weight out of the engine, uh, we want to give us the ability if we see fit to actually move the engine a little bit lower in the chassis and a little bit further down and at the same time what we wanted to do is do a better job of pulling a vacuum in the crankcase. So there are a couple of advantages or a couple of reasons behind fitting a dry sump system. The key one of course is a race car that's out on a racetrack. The g-forces that are being pulled under acceleration, braking and cornering, basically a stock wet sump will generally not work that well. You're going to end up with problems with the oil running away from the pickup. When that happens it draws air in and it doesn't take very long uh, when you've got oil starvation like this for your engine bearings to suffer dramatic failures. So that's the first thing is just getting a constant supply of high pressure oil to all of those engine vital components. There is actually a performance advantage though as well. By drawing a vacuum and uh, basically evacuating the blow by gases out of the crankcase, what this can allow us to do is run a lower tension uh, ring pack and this is going to give good oil control while still, while actually providing us a small advantage due to the reduced frictional losses. Uh, so there's that aspect as well as evacuating that oil and uh, oil vapour I guess you could say out of the crankcase can reduce our windage losses. So there's sort of a double win there if you can do a better job of evacuating that. It's a fine line, you can't just say that uh, more vacuum is always better, you can actually get yourself into a situation where it can be problematic if you're pulling too much vacuum in the crankcase, this can actually be a problem as well. When you're at high RPM wide open throttle we've got a lot of blow by going past the uh, pistons, this is particularly noticeable on high boost turbocharged engines and the dry sump pump is doing its best to, to scavenge all of that, the oil and the blow by 
I guess is out of the crankcase and then of course when you're at high RPM maybe you jump on the clutch real, real typical with a drag car at the end of a drag pass uh, the driver will jump on the clutch initially the engine is still at very high RPM maybe 8 to 10,000 RPM uh, but as soon as the driver gets off the throttle and on the clutch of course uh, as the engine's slowing down there's much much less blow by but the dry sump pump is still being spun over so uh, there are some considerations there that we do need to take into account it's not just a case of more vacuum is better so moving on anyway point of this discussion is that uh, we are going to be looking at upgrading that dry sump system so I've got this picture here it's actually not for the 1UZ but uh, bear with me because for all intents and purposes it looks exactly the same so this is a billet CNC machined uh, sump from Daily Engineering and uh, we've actually posted about some of Daily Engineering stuff before a really really high quality product they uh, do a lot of stuff that's bolt on for all manner of LS engines uh, they also partnered with TRD over in the US for uh, their Grand Am engine design so Daily produced a dry sump system for that so what is key here I'm going to show you a little bit more of why I'm talking about the Grand Am engine in a second is that uh, this actually ends up becoming a five stage pump pump uh, so four scavenge stages so double the number of scavenge stages we've currently got still obviously one pressure stage and the important thing here as well is it simplifies the whole installation because uh, this is essentially uh, an internal scavenge path so the dry sump pump itself bolts on over here and it makes it much easier there's not uh, multiple lines running from the underside of the sump this also helps really dramatically reduce the profile pump now the reason I am talking about this is that the Grand Am engine was based on the Toyota 3UZ although uh, for the Grand Am race series they essentially only kept the engine block everything else was bespoke and a number of these engines actually ended up over here in New Zealand so uh, through my old business I was involved as the parity manager for the NZV8 TLX touring car series this was a series that used multiple different cars uh, there was a, a Toyota Camry which is the one we've got here there was a Ford Falcon for those of you joining in the, from the US not a model that you got over there uh, also Holden Commodore which essentially is the uh, Pontiac G8 so different engines the one that was in the Camry was this TRD Grand Am engine six of those were brought over for these cars and unfortunately the daily engineering sump didn't fit in the chassis because the dry sump pump needed to be exactly where the steering rack was so currently the six of these sumps sitting surplus to requirements with one of the teams that I worked with uh, so we're hoping to get one of those down here in the not too distant future to test fit see if that's going to work because that'll be a nice hopefully relatively cost effective solution to our dry sump situation give us a uh, nice uh, improvement in our dry sump design and as well uh, just reducing our weight and getting the ability if we want to then move the engine a little bit lower in the chassis Right, I want to just show you a couple of clips on YouTube. We've got a bit going on here, so let me try and get through this. So if we jump over across to my laptop screen for a moment, and what I'm going to do is try and mute that. That's going to be much better. Uh, this is a video that uh, we shot while we were over in Goodwood for the Festival of Speed. It's not too often that you get the opportunity to get up close and personal with uh, this many F1 cars and it's also not that often that you end up with an F1 car uh, doing donuts right in front of you. That was a little bit of an unexpected bonus. Now one of the aspects with uh, any of the engines at this level is that they get a little bit more complex in terms of operating them. And what I mean here is it's not a case of rocking up to the track on a weekend, unloading the car out of the transporter, firing it up and heading out for a practice session. It's quite a lot more involved with, than that and uh, what you'll usually see is that the mechanics of the teams will actually preheat uh, the oil and usually the water that is being circulated uh, through the engines. Actually, it's the other way around. Uh, always the water, sometimes the oil. Uh, and this is essential because if that wasn't done, you'd actually find that uh, it's basically impossible to turn the en engine over. And this all really comes down to the bearing clearances that are used. It's quite different to what we see uh, in 
road car engine or a modified road car engine. It's the bearing clearances as well as all the other clearances in the engine. I should elaborate a little bit more. And uh, what we'll find is that uh, they actually run very, very tight clearances and this allows them to use a very thin grade of oil as well. Now the advantage with this is once everything's up to operating temperature, those clearances from room temperature actually grow and that's why once everything is at operating temperature, obviously the engine spins over nice and freely. Uh, using tight clearances with a thin oil with nice rigid bespoke components like the engine block and the crankshaft you'll find in an F1 engine uh, means that there is less frictional loss in the engine and obviously at this level uh, every last horsepower is important so they are going to extremes to make sure they're getting the most out of these engines. So uh, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about that I've probably given you most of the tips there but head over and check out that video, give a, a thumbs up if you like it, if you've got any questions ask those in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them there. I just wanted to also share, we'll head back across to my laptop screen, uh, we have also finally got uh, our latest vlog updated uh, and out. So this is from the fourth round of the, New uh, the South Island Endurance Racing Championship from Ruapuna, uh, Christchurch, New Zealand. It is a little, a little old now, it's taken us a while to get on top of that. So uh, for those who have been following you'll know that, uh, spoiler alert, uh, unfortunately we didn't finish the race, retired from this race while we were leading our class with about a 45 second uh, time margin to second place. Uh, this was a result of yet another problem with our drive shaft shop axles. It wasn't actually the drive shaft shop axle that failed in the race. Uh, the drive shaft shop 1000 horsepower axles those who are following us will probably already be well aware of the sagas we've had there. Uh, they were too short. They got us through the uh, test day the day before on the Friday. Uh, no problems there. Went out for a scrub session on the race day and in three laps of the scrub session they popped out of the LSD leaking diff oil onto the exhaust causing a lot of smoke and getting us black flagged. We made the decision, a difficult decision just before qualifying, sorry just after qualifying to swap back to a set of stock axles uh, because we weren't confident that the drive shaft shop axles would get us through the race without uh, failing again and popping out. The stock axles had done us well for our first round at Teratonga, they'd done an entire one hour race plus a whole day of practice so uh, we were quietly confident, unfortunately that confidence was uh, misplaced because with about 7 minutes to go, Ben in the hot seat, uh, one of the axles broke. So there you go, I've spoiled the uh, the key part there a little bit but again if you've been watching you're probably already pretty well aware of what's been going on. But check out the the vlog, uh, we're really enjoying making these, it's kind of a bit more of a light hearted uh, behind the scenes uh, kind of look at what actually goes in through one of our race weekends and you get to see a little bit more of uh, the personality of the rest of the team as well. It's not just me in front of the camera which makes a nice change. Also gives our video crew, uh, Scott and Jono, a bit more of an opportunity to let loose and add a bit of creative flair. So uh, we're really enjoying them. The comments are positive. Again, if you have got any comments on the vlog, anything you'd like to know, uh, leave us a comment and we'll be happy to answer them in there. Uh, moving on, we have just received another pretty exciting product. So uh, this is our VBOX Light Data Logger. So uh, this is actually on the recommendation of Matt, our new employee for our Racecraft sister brand. So uh, this is a video based data logger. So this is the little data logger unit itself. Uh, it logs to an SD card that goes in the front there. Uh, we also have, let's just uh, show this on the overhead camera here, uh, this is the driver display so uh, it's a remote display that hooks up to that obviously we've still got all the stickers on it because it is brand new only arrived yesterday and taken it out of the box so this will give the driver an indication of lap time uh, plus predictive gain loss etc everything that you'd expect so there's that unit there this is the little data logging box and then uh, it also comes with two cameras so these are quite a nice small design camera uh, they are aren't quite 1080p, it says high res on this camera but I've seen the footage and it's definitely uh, not what we'd expect these days. Uh, I will point out that the video the video VBOX Lite is quite an old product from RaceLogic now and has been superseded so we've actually got one of the older products, we will be getting their latest and greatest as well so uh, that's why we, we haven't got sort of the definition on the video that we would expect. 
So the advantage with this package is that it allows the analysis of the driver from a driving line standpoint using that video. And this is a really powerful technique. It's something that uh, I think has only probably become more pronounced in the last sort of decade or so. Prior to that, uh, video wasn't so much incorporated in data analysis. It was purely looking at the signals uh, from all of the input sensors. But let's just have a quick look over on my laptop. And uh, this is just an idea of uh, what everything kind of looks like once it's all loaded up here. Uh, so this is actually Matt comparing two laps in a race. So uh, you get to overlay your laps and obviously here uh, we've got video uh, from each of those laps below you can basically display any of the parameters you're interested in. Uh, this is showing a delta time, so basically a time variance between the two laps. Uh, then there is a speed variance and then a longitudinal acceleration. So you can log basically any of the parameters you want. It is a, a GPS based data logger which is pretty common these days. It uh, really simplifies data analysis because it doesn't require a timing beacon or anything to be put out on the side of the track. You can just set the GPS coordinates for uh, your particular start finish line and then the data logger will go and do everything from there. So pretty excited to get that out and get it installed in our racecraft car. Uh, we are going to be incorporating this into our data analysis course which hopefully we're going to start recording uh, in the next couple of weeks. So pretty excited about that uh, data analysis through my own career uh, both in circuit racing and drag racing and also analysis and improvement of engine performance has been something I've relied on heavily and I know that there's so much power in that as well. Uh, if we take circuit racing for just a novice enthusiast uh, I'd be very surprised if some basic data analysis with an entry level data analysis package I uh, wouldn't be able to provide you gains in excess of a second a lap and that's uh, quite a lot of lap time to gain as well. So again, we'll be getting into that uh, in hopefully the next couple of weeks. Now, just talking about Racecraft briefly there, uh, Matt also filmed or recorded his first Racecraft Gold Members webinar uh, last week so pretty excited about that, we'll just head across to my laptop screen uh, for a moment uh, so his very first webinar was talking about uh, how best to drive a race car in the rain and I know that that's something that a lot of drivers me included, uh, generally not too fond of, generally uh, sort of a little bit scared of driving on a wet racetrack but what we will find of course is that uh, a lot of drivers who really focus and hone their skills in the wet, this is where they'll really shine and uh, there are some simple tips that Matt shares in this webinar about driving lines, car setup etc uh, that uh, really will help you gain some valuable lap speed on a wet racetrack. Uh, now at the same time we are now starting to do these webinars at the moment they are going to be fortnightly I'll just head across to the webinars page here uh, so this is our upcoming list that Matt will be hosting the reason we've got Matt hosting it is that Matt's actually won some things so he's a little bit more handy behind the steering wheel than I am uh, I'm pretty good with data analysis but I don't want to be the one standing here trying to teach people how to drive a race car at the end of the day I'm also just a weekend warrior home enthusiast so we've got uh, coming up how to make the most out of a track day, uh, overtaking and race starts, defending and coming back from a spin or a crash and also how to manage your tyres on and off the track. So some really interesting content uh, for those who are interested a little bit more in how to actually get the most out of your car out on a racetrack and improve your driving. Along with that we do also have uh, Matt's first course uh, about to get started filming just in the final throes of editing that now uh, which will be on corner waiting so for those who aren't aware what that term means I'll just jump across to our Instagram feed here and this is a shot of our Toyota 86 on the corner weight scales so uh, essentially what we do is we've got a set of scales we can see one of them there one under each wheel of the car this is a wireless setup all of the weights from each corner of the car come through and get displayed on this and uh, without trying to get too deep into this, uh, basically what we're trying to do is equalise the weights, uh, in particular the cross weight, to 
that right, uh, along with a few other aspects, if we can get that right, what it's going to do is improve the balance of the car, getting the car to essentially handle and feel the same in left hand corners and right hand corners. And this is a technique that we'll also see here uh, on the Jota Sport Orica LMP2 car. This is with the car set up on their flat patch and again we can see exactly the same scales actually that are fitted uh, under, underneath each corner of the car, albeit this time the car is set up on what is called a setup hub so it's not actually sitting on its wheel. So that course hopefully will have in the not too distant future. Uh, while I am talking about our other sideline projects as well, uh, I've mentioned the ETS Fab School which is where uh, we have teamed up with Nigel Petrie from Engineered to Slide over in Melbourne, Australia to produce some online fabrication courses. The Motorsport Fabrication Fundamentals course was released just before Christmas and we've got a lot more content coming out. Uh, Nigel's about to get stuck into filming a, a TIG welding and MIG welding welding course and uh, pretty excited as well. We'll just again head over and have a look at uh, the Engineer to Slide Facebook page. Uh, this is a car that uh, he's going to be donating to the cause of uh, filming some more course content. So this is a Australian delivered Nissan S15. Uh, it's got a bit of a checkered history because the car uh, is actually a write-off. Uh, it looks mint I know, uh, it's probably one of the tightest S15s I've ever seen. It was uh, slightly flood damaged. But to be honest, it uh, doesn't look like it's very flood damage. It still, it still runs perfectly, uh, but it is going to be the perfect uh, sort of starting point for some of the course material that Nigel will be creating. Uh, in particular, this car is going to go from basically a standard road going car because it is uh, a write off, it can't be re registered for the road. And uh, he's going to be uh, going through and building it into a club level race car. So we're going to go through the aspects of roll cage design and construction. Uh, constructing things such as uh, exhaust headers for a turbocharged engine, intercooler plumbing and exhaust system etc. Look at suspension as well. So a lot of really interesting course content that's going to be coming out for the ETS Fab School over the next 12 months. Uh, if you are interested you can follow ETS Fab on Instagram. Uh, also check out ETSFab.com the website and uh, the moment engineered to slide on Facebook follow along and you'll learn a little bit more about all of those projects as they come up. Our uh, last one for today, we are still running our giveaway for an AIM Solo 2 DL logging unit. <coughs> A little bit like the uh, the V-Box Lite that we just looked at, albeit this one does not include video. So this is a self-contained data logging unit, uh, uses GPS for lap timing, uh, it will give you lap gain loss predictive. Uh, it's really nice feature with this unit is that you can download and communicate with, download data and communicate with the AIM Solo 2 uh, via uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, one or the other, I think it's Wi-Fi actually, I take it back. And that means you've got no problems with the cables, you don't actually have to get into the car to do that. So this unit is the DL model, so it's a slightly more advanced model which also allows you to incorporate data from your ECU, either aftermarket or a factory ECU via CAN, so you can take that straight from the onboard diagnostic diagnostic port if you've got a late model factory car, get aspects such as speed, throttle position, RPM etc to uh, really improve the amount of data available for your analysis. Nice thing with this is because it is so small, it is self contained, can be battery powered if you charge it, it's really easy to move this from car to car uh, just using a suction cup on your windscreen as well so uh, quite a nice unit uh, to take along to a track day. So uh, I'll get uh, the team to drop a link that you can follow into the chat there. Uh, we are including the AIM Solo 2 DL along with our Racecraft Wheel Alignment Fundamentals, Motorsport Wheel Alignment Fundamentals course so you can actually learn how to adjust your alignment at the track or in your home workshop and uh, start improving your car and your lap times uh, and you're going to be able to get the data out of that AIM Solo 2 in order to actually prove that you're going in the right direction. Uh, I think there are only a few days left for that giveaway to run so make sure you 
jump on that. I think you'll also find that there are a couple of other tasks when you head to the link that you can complete in order to get yourself a few more entries into the draw. So uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, absolutely no cost to get involved and uh, you never know, you could be the lucky winner. Alright, give us a few moments here and we'll get started with today's we webinar. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.